One of the most told stories of Jesus is that of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. So the story begins with Jesus, and he's walking through this town called Sychar, which is located in Samaria. He then begins to feel weary from his journey and sits down at this well. Then, out of the blue, this woman comes out to get water, and Jesus simply asks her for a drink. But many of us have heard of this story before, so we know where this story ends. The Samaritan woman soon realizes she is speaking to Jesus and ends up telling everyone in her town about him. But there is this one spot in particular which has people confused. One of the weirdest transitions that Jesus makes. While the woman hears Jesus say, Give me a drink. Her response to him is, Why are you, a Jew, asking me for a drink? Then Jesus responds by saying, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So then why? Why would Jesus ask for a drink of water and then start talking about this spiritual water? Most people think that it's because the Jews hated the Samaritans and thought of them as dirty, and Jesus was simply correcting that harmful mentality. But I believe that this is only a partial truth, that it was not only because of the misguided mentalities of that time, but rather the fact that she herself believed them, believed that she deserved to be hated, to be looked down upon, to be unwanted, to be unworthy. Society, not only the Jews, but also her fellow people, proved those thoughts and those feelings. So when Jesus asks for that drink of water, she's already thinking, does he not know who I am? Does he not know what I've done? Does he not know what I've become? And it's as if Jesus simply stated, if only you knew, knew that I still want you. Yet we find ourselves saying these exact same things in our own daily lives. Things like, but Jesus, do you not know who I am? And despite it all, he simply responds with, still, I love you. But the things I've done, I forgive you. But I hate who I've become. Give me your pain. But no one wants me. Not my family, my wife, my children, my friends, my... I want you. Why? Because I love you. It is not about how you think of yourself, but what he thinks of you. It is not about what you have, but what he has to offer. And it is not about what we have done, but what he has already done. We can keep playing games and pretend that everything is alright. We can keep up our facades and believe that no one can hurt us. Or, we can just come to the ultimate realization that no matter what we think, what we do, what we say, that there is a God with such love, a love to the point that even when people, people like you and I, betrayed Him, cursed Him, spat on Him, and tortured Him, even to the point of nailing Him to the cross, that despite what we've done, despite who we are, despite what others think, despite it all, Jesus still